Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 21st, 2022, around 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical cyclone to be forming in the Atlantic main development region. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we notice that it is pretty quiet across the basin in terms of tropical activity, at least for now. We have the remnant circulation of potential tropical cyclone four now inland over portions of southern Texas. We have this big rainmaker, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And then we've got these two other tropical waves moving out into the Atlantic, one with a 20% chance of development over the next five days as this moves westward. And we have another system emerging on the coast of Africa today, and then we'll be moving off the coast. And this could also have a chance for development. So let's go ahead and jump straight into those two features. Taking a look here at the National Hurricane Center 8 a.m. Tropical Weather Outlook, we do have the potential for a storm right now near the Cabo Verde Islands, moving generally towards the west here. This has a 20% chance of developing over the next couple of days as this moves westward into a little bit better of a environment here. And when we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery, we notice that this is actually the wave that is being tagged by NHC today very bare there's not really much there and that is really attributed to all this dry stable air that is still around here to the north we haven't really had that madden julian oscillation swing into phases one two and three yet and once we do that of course we will should be able to increase the moisture out here at least a little bit we have this other tropical wave that is emerging off the coast today it's still kind of inland but will be emerging over the next few days and this also has the potential for development as this moves westward across the tropical Atlantic and then other tropical waves back here as well. If you look at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. This is the 12Z Ron valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here's this tropical wave right now that NHC is kind of keeping their eye on. We notice that there's really not much there today. It's a dry wave, but there is some... Uh, you know spin in the atmosphere with this potential system and we notice that on the gfs forecast at the very least there does seem to be at least a little bit of spin that is kind of left around but it eventually kind of just dies out here then this new wave that emerges off the coast of africa i'm not really sure if it's actually this wave right here it doesn't really seem to be it seems to actually be a wave behind that uh, but either way there is this wave that emerges within the next few days and tries to go on to develop a tropical cyclone south of the Cabo Verde Islands here by Friday. So this is the day five period. And then tries to develop a stronger system out in the long range here by the 31st of August. And of course, this would be a tropical cyclone on the forecast model. Now, if we jump to the 12Z run here that is just beginning to load in, we notice that we at least have a little bit more of a discernible future on the 12Z GFS with our lead system that NHC is kind of keeping their eye on. And here's this potential system indicated by the GFS near the Cabo Verde Islands here by sometime on Friday. And it still shows that tropical system developing here in the long range. So we'll see whether or not this is actually a discernible future or not. We're going to have to kind of keep our eye on that. If you kind of look at the European forecast again, it is somewhat on a different solution. There actually is this lead wave that tries to go on to develop here. Once it enters the western part of the Atlantic Basin, that is certainly a possibility. And then we have more waves coming off the coast of Africa. And this system right here could very well be a tropical system here, but is kind of getting that northern wave bias that the European forecast has. But the problem here, if we actually look at the relative humidity, we notice that it's not really increasing much. And there's still going to be a lot of this dry air that kind of plagues these waves. They're going to have to come off at a pretty far southern latitude here to be able to really survive because all this dry stable air to the north with these tropical waves that come off any further towards the north, they're going to run into this dry, stable, hostile air. If you should look at the GFS Ensemble and the mean sea level pressure at this time, we notice that again, our lead wave doesn't really have a lot of model support and they're actually really isn't that much but if you actually look at the upper level wind environment it is more than favorable for tropical cyclone activity towards the end of august we noticed that most of the westernlies that have kind of been plaguing portions of the north central mdr have actually now moved quite substantially further towards the north the caribbean is open for business and also the whole entire mdr and that is kind of again much on the european forecast for instance again 
Not really much perking up with that lead wave, but that wave behind it is the one that we'll be watching. Again, that upper level wind environment at this time, pretty favorable, but this does show a little bit of a different pattern, kind of that anti that um, wave breaking pattern. Not necessarily wave breaking though, because wave breaking has been attributed to most of the season's problems, but it's not actually wave breaking that is causing most of these problems. And I, I kind of see a lot of people get that misconstrued that wave breaking is the sole problem. It's really not. Uh, but there is a multi-factor contributing, um, there's multi, multiple different factors contributing to why we haven't seen the uptick that we have been expecting. Um, but we still are expecting that uptick just a little bit pushed back. But we notice that the European does have a slightly more hostile look there for portions of the MDR. But either way, it seems like things are going to begin to ramp up here sometime by late August. Again, we have that system right now which does show the potential for some promising outlooks once it starts to get into the western part of the main development region and away from some of those more hostile conditions and they'll be watching the subsequent waves behind it as it moves off into the mdr as well now shifting our focus real quick to the potential rainfall flooding across portions of texas today of course we have that big severe weather system well it's not really a huge severe weather system but it is producing some severe weather and producing some very significant rainfall. If we actually take a look at the rainfall totals for the next five days across portions of Texas, again, generally speaking, most of central and eastern Texas at least has the chance for seeing at least three inches. We notice that really from about Houston northward there, there is a threat for about two and a half inches. And from portions around Lubbock, Texas, all the way uh, into like Shreveport, Louisiana, the potential exists for about four to seven inches of rainfall. Again, most of that more significant rainfall, those seven inch plus totals will be east of the DFW Metroplex. So that is certainly some good news. But either way, there is the potential for about five to six inches of rainfall within the Dallas and DFW Metroplex. That is certainly some bad news. And of course, that flooding risk uh, does extend well into portions of Oklahoma portions of Arkansas and Louisiana as well. So again, a wide stretch of, of places all the way from Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, and Louisiana are under the gun for a pretty significant rainfall threat over the next couple of days. And we'll talk about more of that here in tomorrow's video. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.